he was shocked when he got him with Collins twice, believe me. Collins, yeah. when uh, I'll say this about yeah. Steve Collins, Steve yeah. Collins was a tough kid yes. and he was well scored. Yeah. You know, he was with the Petronelli brothers and Agler, yes. he spied hundreds of rounds with Agler. Mm -hmm. So he was a well scored fighter. But when I offered, when we fought Lou Jen yes. in Streatham, well, uh, from Streatham, sorry, when we fought him up London, I offered that fight to Steve Collins first yes. and he turned it down. Yes. Or cool. uh, let's get it right. Steve Collins didn't turn it down. Barry Hearn turned the fight down. Yes. I said to Barry Hearn, mm. "We will fight Steve Collins." And he said, "No, I can't get Steve. Well, we don't want Steve Collins in there yet." Yeah. Obviously, he had bigger plans. He waited yeah. till he was shot. Yes. What did you feel about that fight where where Nigel kind of retired in 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 the ring? He got a bit of stick over it, didn't he? Yeah, I got the stick and all. Yeah. Yeah. But to be quite honest with you, I can see where the public's coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, he He's shouldn't such have. A warrior, look, let's get it. Look, let's be hundred percent straight here now. I can say this now because yes. it's all over, yes. right? Look, I'm, I'm going to say something that nobody's going to ever think I'm going to say. Yeah. Look, I knew he was going to get beat before he got in the ring, mm -hmm. right? Let's be honest. Right? I know the way he trained for the fight. Yeah. He wasn't fit enough to beat Steve Collins, let yeah. alone good enough. Yeah, yes. he wasn't fit enough. Mm -hmm. But after all the entertainment Nigel Benz give them fans oh, over the yes. years, do they begrudge him earning one more payday? The man, if he got another three paydays in mm -hmm. at the same amount, you know, would you begrudge him that? Because he gave his heart and soul mm -hmm. when he could have got killed against McClellan. Yes. You yeah. understand that? Yeah, yeah. And the Eubank too, and a couple of others that were really tough. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. He's given his heart and soul to his career. Yeah. Why begrudge somebody at the end of their career? Mm -hmm. Right? And he still gave it a go. He still gave it a go. He yeah. gave it all, but he didn't yeah. have it in the locker. No. You understand? He, yeah, the, yeah. he went to the well, but the well was dry. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So what my argument with his public is, is look, look at it in a proper, honest way. If you're a true boxing fan, yeah. why be grudging? All right, should never have had the fight in the first, but all right, he earned good money there. It yeah. weren't for 50 grand. Yeah. It was for like nearly a million pound. Yeah. How can you be a man earning another million quid after all what he's given you, the entertainment? Yeah, absolutely. You understand? Did he want to retire? He knew after that he had to. Yeah. It just wasn't there. He went to the well and it just wasn't there. And the, the heart to get up and do the training, his hands were hurting him every morning. His hands hurt him every morning. Really? Yeah. What, what did you feel, though, when he, when he packed up? Uh, did you feel, oh, that's the end for me? Or, 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 or did you well, support it? Something that we've not spoke about yet, uh, which was very, played a very important role of uh, him retiring, mm -hmm. and I felt it was time to tell him, yeah. was... During, I, I don't know which fight it was now, but going back, I got a phone call from the British Boxing Board of Control. They called me in about mm, four or five fights before that ending, something like that. And I get a phone call from the board, uh, John Morris, and he said, Peter, he said, we need to see you. So I said, OK. So I flew back over to London and uh, they called me and they said, look, we've got a problem with Nigel. Mm -hmm. So I said, what's the problem then? They said, well, we found a lesion on his brain. A, ble a bleed. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh yeah. So they've gone, well, yeah, it's, it's not super bad. Mm -hmm. We're not happy, but we it's not bad enough. Our doctors are saying that it's not enough for us to stop him boxing at this mm -hmm. moment in time, but they would like him to have a scan before every fight now. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, okay, John. So he's gone, yeah. So uh, he's gone, right. So now, from now on, before every fight, we're gonna have to have a scan. Mm -hmm. I thought, what do I do here? This is an odd situation here, I thought, because I can't tell Nigel, because if I tell Nigel, that's going to put him a fighting in the ring. That's going to interfere with his yes. performance. Or, you know, because he could think, oh, hang on, I can't take that punch because of the air, or, you know, so it's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. It's more dangerous telling him, not telling him. And I can't ignore it. Mm -hmm. And if anything happens to him, I don't want it to be my sole responsibility. Even yeah. though, under the British Boxing Board of Control rules, a manager is the next of kin yes. to a fighter. Yes. Yeah. yeah, people don't know that. Mm -hmm. It's not his parents, no. it's not his wife, it's me. Yes. That's why when he signs that paper, he's giving it all up to me. Yeah. So I thought, right, I know what to do. Nigel's very close with his brother, John. Mm -hmm. So I knew, obviously, John and Dixon, his dad, very well. So I phoned up Dixon and John, and they come round, and I sat them in my front room, and I said to them at the time, I said, look, this is the situation. Mm -hmm. I need your guidance. And I said, Dixon, you're his dad. You tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I said, but if I tell Nigel, I can't put him in the ring again. Yeah. I said, I doubt if you want to fight again. I said, so we have to make the decision amongst the three of us. Mm -hmm. What's best for Nigel Ben? I said, but I want you to know this, that if anything did happen, I've told you now before the next fight, mm -hmm. so that you know that I'm being honest with you and John, mm -hmm. yeah, who was very close to Nigel, and he actually worked for Nigel running yes. these properties. So 
I said, all right, John. So they went, yeah, yeah, that's sweet. So they had a little conversation and then they come back to me and John said to me, Pete, we're going to let him fight on, but we want to obviously an update as often as possible on yes. uh, the situations. I said, but we can't tell Nigel. Mm-hmm. That's because of the situation. So they said, no, fine. So that's one of the f- reasons what, why I wanted him out after the uh, yes. Steve Collins fight. He started yes. taking too many head shots. Yes. Yeah. From two or three you fights before that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What happened was, he re- after that fight on a Sunday, a uh, Saturday night, on the Monday morning, Nigel came round to my, my big house. I had I had a big, massive house in Gideon Park. And uh, he came round there. He parked on me drive, got out. And I went, we've got to go up London. So he said, what is that then? I said, brain scan. And he went, what do you mean brain scan? I said, we're going to go and have one more brain scan. I said, because that's it now. I said, and I sat him down in my house and I told him, I said, you've got a bleed on the brain. I said, and I've booked an appointment for today. Yeah. He's gone, I bleed on the brain. I said, yeah. I said, you've got a tiny. I said, you've had it for about the last four or five fights. I said, why do you think, when you used to say to me, why have I got to keep having these uh, scans done? I said, yeah. this is why. Yes. How did he react to that? Did he feel that you should have told him before? No, 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 no. He trusted me implicitly. I said, look, Dixon knew and John knew. Once he knew yeah. they knew, he was good as gold. Yeah. He might have said something different if they didn't know. Yes. But he knew I'd done the right thing in speaking to the dad yeah. and to his brother John, who yeah. he's close to, yeah. and he knew that I'd done the right thing mm-hmm. because I couldn't tell him, and he did want to continue. Yeah. He was fit enough and strong enough to continue, yeah. but obviously then I was a little bit wary on who he fought. Yes, yes. Uh, and you know, making sure he got a rest in between the fights, you know, because Nigel was fighting three times a year, four times a year sometimes. What, what was your relationship like when it sort of ended? Did you remain friends or did it... Yeah, to... yeah. what happened was me and Nigel were very close away from boxing. All through his career that I was with him, uh, not just the fights, after the fight Monday morning, he'd ring me, he'd go, Pete, what are you doing? Where are you? You know, you coming around or whatever. We, that's yeah. the relationship. We were like best mates, yeah. like brothers. Yeah. We never argued. We never had no arguments hardly ever, you know? And uh, we had a really good relationship. And then what happened was after he retired... Mm-hmm. Obviously, he started doing different things and I was doing different things and I was going with other, I had other fighters. One day, he rang me up and I answered the phone and he went, Pete, it's me, Nodge. I went, yeah, what's the matter, mate? And he went, this is the God's honest truth. He went, I need you to come a court for me. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean court? As soon as he said the word court, my ears went, because I don't do that. I don't, be- sorry, I don't believe in courts. You understand? Yeah. So he said, I want you to come a court for me. I was going, what do you mean court? So he said, yeah, I need you to come to court. Uh, I've got a case and uh, I need you to say something about somebody. Yes. Uh, and I said, no, no, I just stop there. Yeah. Oh, I said, stop there, no. He goes, what's the matter, Pete? I went, I don't go to court for nobody, no. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm not getting a witness box against nobody. I said, yeah. I had my eye ripped out of a knife. I said, and I still wouldn't go to court against the geezer. Yeah. I said, I'd sort it out myself on my own court. You know, I said, I'm my own judge and jury. Mm-hmm. I'll deal with it myself. You go, oh no, I need you to come a call. If you don't come a call for me, I don't want to be your mate no more. Yeah. So I said, well, Nigel, I'm sorry. That's how it's got to be. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to be my mate, we don't want to be a mate. Mm-hmm. So this was in about 2000, early, yeah, about 2005 or six, mm-hmm. something like that. Then he never spoke to me till 2017. Really? So that, that after all that yeah, experience? after all we've been through and all yeah. we've done, as far as I was concerned, he was still one of my closest friends. Yeah. Not just for boxing, and I would have still been his mate, loyal. Do you feel that both of you were a bit pig-headed about it? Because you're both very... Yeah, aggressive. We've got guys. that aggressiveness in us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, He'd never come to that, though. He would no. never have come to that. No, he came come round here, we were still pals. Yeah. And he went to me, you know, he, he, we was, he was a little bit at the beginning. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you regret that falling out? Yes, I do, very yeah. much. He's a very good guy. He was very, very kind to me. He yeah. was good to work for. It was a pleasure to be around, and it was an honour to be around. Yeah. You know, and I'll say that. And without Nigel being, I would, I would always be Peter Defreitas, the like the the rucker type of thing, you know. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been in the boxing world like I am yeah. now, yeah. or I had the, the uh, studied it as much as I did. Yeah. So I've learned a lot because I was at the top for many years, yes. all over the USA. I've been Mexico, Cuba. Mm-hmm. I've been all around the world doing it. Yeah. And, and I've learned from all the best. I've worked with the top trainers, yes. the top managers, met all the top fighters. So I was always at the top, never at the bottom. Yes. I never, I'm, I always evaded that side of it. 
So I always worked from the top, but yeah. sort of downwards. Uh, how many years was it that you didn't speak? So 10, 12 oh, years? Oh, about 10, 12 years, yeah. yeah. So you, you kind of regret that, would you? If, you, if, you, if you'd have gone back, would you have changed your decision about going to court? No, 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 I can't go to court for nobody. No, 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 no. No, no it doesn't. No, 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 they don't compete. No, 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 no. Not, not if he offered me a million pounds, would I do it? No. And that's a fact. Yeah. I don't go to court for nobody. Yeah. It's a shame that he put that ultimatum on you. Yeah, he should have done that to me, because he yeah. knows what type of guy I am. Yeah. He knows I'm from the street, and they are code. Yeah. My pals out there would be live not they'd be shocked if anything because yeah. they know I won't roll that I don't roll that way. No, no. You got me by now. Everybody, yeah. everybody, they know I don't roll that way. I mean, so where was the last time you saw him? Twenty seventeen. Yeah. He come round here and uh, we went out to the gym and we, that's where I met Connor the second time after he grew up. That's the first time I met Connor for in yeah. twenty seventeen. Yeah. Uh, Tony Sims' gym. Time? No. He, oh, I did. Yeah, from Australia. He rang me from Australia. Yeah. And we spoke on the phone once, that's it. And uh, he never rang me when he found out I got cancer or nothing. Really? No. I was a little bit upset about that because uh, I did care a lot about the kid. Yeah. It wasn't about money with me. No. No, it wasn't about money. Don't get me wrong, it's all nice to earn money. Yes. But with me, money ain't my god. No, of course. Yeah, you know, yeah. my friendship and my loyalty to my friends and my yeah. it means more to me. Mm-hmm. Would you express that to him? I mean, if he, that, that you were upset in that, that manner? No. If he's a, a real person, which I think he is, mm-hmm. he knows what he's done. Yeah. But whether he feels it's in his way... I mean, what he said to me when he came around in 2017, which is, I can understand very mm-hmm. clearly, he said to me, look, Pete, he went, we had great times together. He said, I've got a family now, a big family. Mm-hmm. I've got children, grandchildren, so I'm really busy, gymnasium. He said, I'm really busy. He said, but I'll always be your friend. Yeah. But I'm really busy, so I can only see you when I see you. I said, no, it's just understandable, that's fair. Yeah. He understood that, and he took me out for the day. We went out mm-hmm. to the gym, yeah. bit of food, whatever. Come yeah. back, had a nice day together. Yeah. So he, he, he's, he's, his heart's still there, deep down. Yeah. He knows I'm a good person, and he yeah. knows I'm loyal to him. Yeah. I won't sit on there and cane him. No, no, you. you I could you tell you things. Ago. I could write books. I've yeah. been offered books, yeah. book deals, mm. two, three book deals. I've been offered. Been offered to go on uh, Sky. TV yeah. to do a documentary. Yeah. I said, no, you're the first one in 27 years I've done a document, uh, uh, an interview on, yeah. on the camera. Well, I won't do one normally. Yeah.